Artificial intelligence is part of the new frontier in medicine. It's the topic of this morning's this morning of our series Grand Rounds, which is the practice of medicine med, uh, practice of medical professionals who teach other doctors about advancements. In a new study we told you about earlier this week, researchers at Google used an algorithm to analyze eye scans as a method for predicting heart disease. Artificial intelligence is being used to quickly analyze data to identify patterns that can help speed up diagnosis and your treatment. The combination of high-tech computing and hands-on medicine is transforming medical care. Our Dr. David Agus directs research on AI at the University of Southern California. He also heads USC's Westside Cancer Center. He's a very busy dude, but he joins us at the table this morning. Good morning to you, Dr. David. Good morning. Davis. I'm still scared about the payback threat. So I have to watch what I say. <laughs> Don't worry. It's directed at me. Yes, no threats. But this is the thing. I think when you use a, a technical term in the green room, it's so freaking cool. To quote, that's what he said about AI. What excites you most? So AI is getting computers to do things that humans did before. And so yes. they could take over our tasks. And so their Google this week showed that if you look at the back of the eye, it's called the fundus, there are blood vessels there. And they took 280,000 of those scans. And now they can actually look in the back of one's eye, tell you your sex, your age, plus or minus three years. They could tell you where you smoked, your blood pressure, and most importantly, your risk for heart disease just by looking inside your All eye. All done by computer. All done by computer, because they look for patterns that the human brain couldn't have seen, but they saw. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, we, imaging is one of the fields where AI can really do wonders, right? Oh, it is doing wonders. So yeah. computers are better at picking up tuberculosis than humans are. You know, imagine uh, you're in an em uh, emergency room and there's a hundred x-rays a doctor has to look at. Well, maybe the computer can look first and say, hey doc, pay attention to this one because we think it may be pneumonia and that patient can be treated quicker because they go to the head of the line, their x-ray. So there's a lot of potential how it's going to transform what we do as physicians. When you get excited about this, we've gotten excited about a lot of technological developments and then two months later we're doing stories about everybody's freaked out about right. them. Yeah. So when you think about this excitement, do you think about it in the context of the doctor's office or do you think about it in the context of I'm at home staring into a retinal scanner and doing an at-home test? It's a great question. You know, I mean, AI is a lot of things. AI is as simple as computers calling you to confirm your appointment. Um, you know, I think there are certain tasks that doctors just aren't as good at. So if, if you're looking under a microscope at breast cancer and there's one cancer cell, you have to look at a thousand cells, say normal cancer, normal cancer. The human brain's not that good at that. The computer can do it all at once. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things it's going to take over and do really well. Other things will be in the purview of the physician. There still will be and always will be an art to medicine. The cool thing about AI, it's going to make the good doctors great. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's exciting to me. AI and heart disease. Yes. We've been teasing that all morning. How does that work? <laughs> well, in the Google example, it can look at the back of the eye. Um, and from those blood vessels, it can predict heart disease. In England, they used AI to look at patients' medical records. And they were better at predicting who's going to get heart disease than the current algorithms of the American Heart Association. So all of a sudden, it's going to be added on to what we do as a doc. We're going to get these clues. The computer is going to say, hey, you should consider this. Because even though they don't meet the standard criteria, we think they might. Why is there so much information in the eye, David? Because we've a, known that. Yeah. That the yeah body I mean, back in the eye, you could see all I the blood vessels. Yeah. And you could see whether they're a little bit thicker in certain areas or not. And you can actually, as an indicator of the blood vessels all over the body. Yeah. So it's an element that gives us clues. Yeah, your eye doctor, when they're looking to give you eyeglasses prescription, should be looking and could, could spot some other health concerns, yeah, yeah. concerns as well. I have, I have a question about, about AI and privacy. Because certainly we could at one point reach the point where genetic information gets, the data all gets loaded up into some cloud, and that becomes both helpful and troublesome. No question about it. So George Bush passed the Genetic Non-Discrimination Act, GINA, about a decade ago. So it protects us from this. But you're right, there's the potential for overuse, for potential using it for other things. And we have to be very careful about security and about taking away identifiers when we start to mine or look at this information. So it's something that needs governance. We need to have somebody in charge, make sure we use AI correctly to make sure we protect privacy and that we do it right in the long run. Yeah, Elon Musk has talked about the pitfalls of AI for civilization. Same thing in medicine? Oh, no question about it. I mean, AI used inappropriately, it can make decisions that aren't under our control. Use in the right way, we're actually going to make things better. Right. I'm hopeful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. David. Thank you, guys. Good to have you at the table.